Kenyan Congo hemorrhagic fever is a, it's an infectious disease, which is part of a big group of uh, hemorrhagic uh, fever uh, infectious diseases, like Ebola. I think most of people have heard about Ebola. So it's almost in the same class, but although it's uh, less virulent than Ebola. So it was discovered uh, a long time ago. First case was discovered in Crimea, that is uh, in Ukraine by then. And the second case was discovered in Congo, which is now the DRC today. So that's why uh, the scientists put the two names together to say Congo Crimean fever or Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, just to, as based on the history where the two viruses were discovered, that's where it's coming from. Yeah. So um, the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, as I said, as the name says, so it's fever. So fever is one of the, the important uh, symptoms. And then hemorrhagic, so it means there is bleeding. So it's fever and bleeding. Those are the two major uh, symptoms that we, we are looking at. But of course, the disease has got a progress, or we can call the disease progression. So there is what we call the incubation period. It means the time the person comes in contact with the virus to the time that the person develops the symptoms, the incubation period. And in this case, the incubation period can go up to seven days, but the maximum can be 13 days, that's almost like two weeks before you develop the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Then we have the second phase of uh, disease manifestation, which we call the pre-hemorrhagic uh, uh, phase. It means we are not bleeding yet, but you start having signs of infection, infection in your body. Mm -hmm. It means you have a headache, you have a joint pain, you have muscle pains, you have fever, of course, which happens, and this can take up to four or five days. Then, if the disease progress, then we can go to the hemorrhagic phase. It means now you are starting bleeding. So we can see people bleeding under the skin. They can have some black spot, kind of bleeding under the skin, even in the mouth. Or they can also bleed from any other uh, internal organs. They can cough blood, they can have diarrhea of blood, they can vomit blood, they can bleed also internally. Then we have the last phase, which is uh, we call the, the convalescent phase. If someone survives, then they can be convalescent up to 10 to 20 days. It means they are recovering, but they are still feeling a bit weak. Their human system is recovering. But of course, in, the, in an extreme and unfortunate case, uh, uh, the patient can, can, can damage. So usually uh, uh, what causes the, 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 the mortality is the complications of most of the time of bleeding, it means the hemorrhagic phase. And that hemorrhagic phase is happening very, very fast. Because mm -hmm. when you start bleeding and then uh, your blood is not clotting, and almost of the time, so you have what we call uh, coagulate, coagulopathy or disseminated intravascular coagulation. It means all your blood in your system is not clotting, and then you are bleeding from all, almost all the organs, from your brain to your lungs to your your kidneys and your, your intestines, then all your organs are not going to function, so they are going to shut down, kind of. So there will be what we call uh, a, a general uh, organ failure, kind of. So all the organs are going to fail to function. So people mostly, or patients mostly, they will die because of the general, you know, organic failure. So most of the organs are not going to function due to that massive uh, hemorrhage, bleeding, which is happening. So the disease is spread, uh, we can say we have got three ways or three modes of transmission, so it's spreading. So this virus is carried by a tick, okay? Uh, there are special ticks that we call the heart ticks, which are actually found uh, in Namibia, in Omaeke. Uh, it was found last year that we have a lot of ticks around, and those ticks can be infected by the virus. Now, <clears throat> if you are bitten by a tick, that is the first mode of, uh, of transmission. So if you are bitten by a tick that is already infected, so the virus can be transmitted from the tick to the human beings. That's how human beings get infected. And most of the cases that we have had uh, last year and, and this year, even the suspect, it's because of a tick bite. To a human being who, who comes in contact with those animals, let's say either the goat or a sheep or a cow that has been bitten by a tick which is infected, and the animal is carrying that virus, and then you come in contact with that animal either by uh, consuming <coughs> The, the, the animal product that does not sterilize, like you drinking milk which is not pasteurized, or we are, we are working in Nabatua, for instance, you are slaughtering animals and you come in contact with the blood 
of those animals without appropriate uh, protection, then you can get infected. And the third uh, mode of transmission is when you come in contact with another human being that has been infected. So let's say someone was diagnosed with uh, uh, hemorrhagic fever, Congo hemorrhagic, Congo, uh, premium Congo hemorrhagic fever, and you are living with that person you do not know. So you come in contact with the body fluid from that person, then you can also get uh, infected. Unfortunately, I'm afraid to say there's no like a cure, uh, like a medicine that can be given and, and cure the virus or kill the virus in the body. Of course, uh, some studies have, have been done, research has been done, there is a, a drug that was found that can be effective, but it's not as much as effective as uh, people can hope. So what we do, usually we treat symptomatically. Just to say, if you come with a, a vomiting, we try to stop that vomiting. If you are losing water through diarrhea and whatever we have, we try to give you much more water. If you are losing blood through bleeding, we try to replace the blood that you are losing. If you are having pain, headache, or joint pain, or you are having fever, we give you painkillers. Just like that. So we treat it symptomatically and looking at your own system to try to build you know, its own capacity to defend itself until maybe probably you can, you, can, you can recover from this disease. So prevention is the only key to, to control the Congo premium hemorrhagic fever. So that's why we are sending out preventive messages. So how can you prevent is to try by all means, if you're working in, in, a, in an animal field or in the veterinary services, or you're working in a farm, you come, you're in contact mostly with animals, you try to treat your animals for ticks. So make sure that you use, uh, uh, there are a lot of chemicals that are approved for tick control. So that should be used to make sure that your animals are free from ticks. And then, uh, it's not all. I also try to, also, uh, when you are doing uh, slaughtering of these animals, you are coming in contact with these animals closely, you need to have appropriate uh, clothing to, clo to cover yourself. So you should not be doing that with bare skin or bare hand. You know, you need to have gloves, you need to have appropriate equipment that protect your body against you getting in touch with the, the body fluid from those animals that probably or potentially may be infected. And then <clears throat> hand washing is very important, especially in the hospital setting where we, if we admit a suspect case, we make sure that we observe universal precautions. So hand washing, wearing of what we call PPEs, uh, personal protective equipment, they are designed to protect yourself against a person who is a suspect or a potential uh, case. And then also uh, 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 people to try, if possible, to have repellent, you know, if there are tick repellent that you can actually find in the market. Yeah, so the, usually um, when you are bitten by a tick, so you don't develop the, the symptoms immediately. So that's why I said the incubation period takes almost from, 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 from three to five, seven days up to 13 days. So how safe is it to, for the other person to ask, that is uh, very, very important to know because uh, most of the time, the person becomes infectious when they have got symptoms. So when they start having, especially when they have uh, vomiting, diarrhea, you know, and they are bleeding, especially at the time of bleeding, they become more and more infectious. But of course, if someone has been bitten a tick for a, a week later ago and then develop now the symptoms now, so he has to be brought to the health facility for us to quarantine the person and then do thorough investigation to see if really uh, the, the, the symptoms the person is presenting is it really a hemorrhagic uh, fever or it could be something else. It could be coincidental that they were bitten by a tick but actually they are having something else. So then it has to be brought to us. Now for the people that were in contact with uh, that suspect, we can call him a suspect, yes? So we have what we call the line list. So we are going to establish a list of all the people that were in contact with that person. In case this person turns out to be positive, like he is now a hemorrhagic fever, then we have to trace the other contact. Everybody that was in contact with that, that person when he was symptomatic, those people, they need also to be investigated. So we have to follow them up, almost up to um, 26 days, and then to see from the day that uh, the person presented the symptoms and you came in contact. So we double the incubation period, which is 13 days by 2, 26 days. So we follow up to, to find out if you are developing fever, if you are developing any other symptoms relating to Congo hemorrhagic fever. If you develop 
that immediately we have also two to bring you in and quarantine you and also treat you. So that's how it's done. Unfortunately, when the person is developing the symptoms, the healthcare worker may not be there. And then the, the people around there, they may not know what is actually happening to this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this relative or this family member. And that's why we say, if you have a history of tick bite and you don't feel well, it's better to go to the health facility so that we can investigate early enough and then we can see, we can actually uh, uh, see if really this is uh, it's the Congo monarchy fever it's according to the case definition or it's not. So that the earlier is the better. And then if we, we quarantine you earlier, then we can also reduce the risk of other people getting in, 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 in contact and also uh, we have a risk of uh, getting uh, contaminated. If the person is symptomatic, it means they are vomiting, having diarrhea, they are bleeding. So if you come in contact with the body fluid, okay, so body, when we talk about the body fluid, so we are talking about saliva, we are talking about the urines, we are talking about the vomiting, we are talking about the diarrhea, the bleeding. So if you come in contact with those body fluid for an infected person, mm -hmm. then you are also at risk of uh, getting infected. So that's the contact we are talking about. But in other countries, they have, they have talked about uh, droplet contact like if the person is talking because when i'm talking saliva maybe is coming out so you have to be taking your distance when you're talking to someone or you're getting uh, you're in, you are in an environment of someone who is a, a, a case or a suspect especially if they are symptomatic so that's why healthcare workers have to put on a mask you know to cover themselves to make sure that they are not getting uh, in contact with body fluid so it's when you come in contact with body fluid actually that you you are uh, uh, at risk of uh, uh, getting infected. So I think uh, uh, in a context of an outbreak like in Omaeke, everybody in Omaeke should be aware that we have a circulating virus in this region and people have to take necessary precautions to protect themselves, especially to treat animals with, uh, with, uh, with uh, animals that are having ticks or to, to have what we call, we put in place tick controls to make sure that the animals are free from ticks. So that, that, that's very, very important, especially from the veterinary uh, point, of, point of view. So that's the key message. And in case someone comes uh, 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 with, um, someone find that they have been bitten by a tick and then they see the tick, is it's better to rush to the health facility so that the tick can be removed. I don't think people should panic because, uh, I mean, people have been seeing ticks around for how many years now? <laughs> so ticks are always there and, and there is no need to panic. People see ticks and always come to us and say, no, I was bitten by a tick, I removed it. And it's, it's something that we live with it.